Get ready for a new age of super adventure when Johnny, Dr. Quest, Race, Haji, and Little Bandit return to Palm Key to find everything looks familiar, but not the same. Has their home been invaded by an alien force or worse? Let's find out in our review of Johnny Quest number one from Dynamite Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Johnny Quest number one from Dynamite Comics. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we've seen all the adaptations before. They've come and gone, and sometimes they're okay, sometimes they're not. But this is the stuff right here. Dynamite Comics tap writer Joe Casey to shake the dust off the Johnny Quest cast of characters for a new mystery that retains the same spirit of wide-eyed adventure that you've come to expect. Johnny and his allies look, speak, and act the same as they always have, but without the limitation of cartoon budgets. They've got a doozy of a challenge on their hands, and it hooks you right away. The issue begins with Johnny, Dr. Benton Quest's father, Race Bannon, Haji, and Bandit returning to their home island of Palm Key after their sailboat endured a freak electrical storm. See the Free Comic Book Day number zero issue. When they come ashore, only after a few weeks absence, they notice their familiar home looks a little less familiar and something's off, and they also feel like they're being watched. Writer Joe Casey starts the issue off on a pitch-perfect note. All the characters have the same voice the same personality, and that everything matches up perfectly with the source material. When confronted with a mystery, the characters hesitate but bravely move forward as a team to face whatever they find. Casey's tale immediately creates this atmosphere and air of suspense and wariness to underscore the mystery of a quote-unquote altered palm key. So you're on your toes, but you're fully invested in the courageousness of the characters. The team heads into their house and looks for clues, eventually finding their way to Dr. Quest's office where a stack of ledgers and documents is strewn all over the desk. Dr. Quest notices something that startles him in a day planner, so he tells the boys to wait outside while he quietly converses with Race to figure out what's going on. What's the big deal? The planner contains notes in Dr. Quest's handwriting, notes he doesn't recognize, but the dates are, get ready for it, several decades in their future. Any reader well-versed in the sci-fi aspects of Johnny Quest stories would probably guess this twist almost immediately, but Casey pulls back the curtain with a steady pace and dramatic yet believable seriousness. In a clever move, Casey uses the revealed moment to split the group in two, which creates parallel detective stories as Johnny and Haji go off to make the discoveries on their own, and that adds pieces to the puzzle to fill in the gaps with Race and Dr. Quest. Johnny and Haji go outside and examine their surroundings. They're kind of confused by how all the foliage grew up so high and so tall and so fast when they've only been gone for a little while. Bandit scampers into the jungle when he catches the scent of something strange. They chase him, and the chase ends when Bandit finds two gravestones with familiar names but confusing dates. Independently, Johnny and Haji figured out what Race and Dr. Quest already knew. Suddenly, a squadron of technologically advanced drones arrives and starts firing missiles at the island. The boys race to take cover, using whatever they can to get their hands on as projectiles that they start throwing at the drones, trying to take them out with what little resources they have. Unfortunately, throwing stones and debris isn't going to be enough, so Race sprints inside the house and suits up with one of their still working rocket belts and a machine gun. His goal? Take out the drones and prevent the destruction of their sailboat containing an experimental device Dr. Quest believes is the key to their time travel troubles. We're not going to spoil everything because there's a lot more to this issue, but we're just going to say that the issue concludes with high-flying heroics, newfangled defenses, an old yet familiar friend, and an old yet familiar enemy. And if you're a Johnny Quest fan, you probably can guess right off the bat who it is. Overall, Joe Casey understood and nailed the assignment. Johnny Quest number one is a pristine example of continuing what works from the classic property with fresh challenges to keep old Johnny Quest fans happy and bring new readers on board. That's the whole point. Something was popular, you want to make it popular again. You take what works and you repeat. That's what Joe Casey did here and he deserves all the kudos for it. If you thought the praise was over, hang on to your jet belts. Sebastian Perez deserves every bit of adulation as much as Joe Casey does for the script because this comic looks like a perfect representation of the Johnny Quest aesthetic. Everything from the character figure work to the setting looks amazingly on point. Bonus praise goes to Lorenzo Scaramella for capturing those sunny yellows and mid-century design aesthetics that highlight palm key with excellent coloring work. Let's take a step back and look at the big picture for new readers. 
Besides the aforementioned Free Comic Book Day Zero issue that explains what happened before the team returned to Palm Key, you don't need any background information to understand this comic. The story could take place anywhere in Johnny Quest's original series of adventures from the cartoon, which really only aired from 1964 to spring of 1965. I believe there's only 15 episodes in total, but that underscores why this property is so important because that short amount of property time had such a lasting impact that you still feel it to this day. Final thoughts, what do we think about Johnny Quest number one? You begin a brand new adventure for Johnny and his allies when they return home to an unsettling mystery. Joe Casey recreates the high-flying spirit of adventure and charm of the source material, and Sebastian Perez's artwork perfectly captures the look and feel of the original cartoon, enhanced greatly by Lorenzo Scaramella's amazing coloring. This debut may be one of Dynamite's best adaptations yet. Therefore, Johnny Quest number 1 earns a 9.5 out of 10, one of our strongest scores in recent history. When you hear about adapting old IPs these days, it's hard not to get cynical. You expect the worst. You're expecting all kinds of backstory changes and revisions and reimaginings and swaps and all kinds of things that take what was special about the original property and then just muck it up to try and make it suitable for modern audiences. But this issue is a pleasant surprise. That's our opinion, but what do you think? Are you a Johnny Quest fan or a fan of any of the classic Hanna-Barbera adventures? Give us a thumbs up if you are and leave us a comment below with which Hanna-Barbera character or property you want to see adapted next. I believe Thunder of the Barbarian is coming up soon. Also remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.